Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Select Board meeting. I call the meeting to order tonight, Wednesday, April 10th at 6.07 p.m. A motion to open the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. I say aye as well. Roll call, Mr. Gito. I'm here. Mr. McCriskey? Aye as well. Vice Chair Cavey? Here. Mr. Carrera? Here. And I am here as well. I ask all to stand if you are able to salute our flag. In accordance with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, which extends the Governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GOC 30A, Section 20, until March 31, 2025, this meeting will be conducted both in person and virtually via Google Meets. The meeting will be recorded by SMAC Cable Television and broadcast live and may be live streamed at www.stodentv.org. A recording of the meeting, transcript, or other comprehensive record of the proceedings will be posted on the town's website and or SMAC as soon as possible after the meeting if law, live broadcast or live streaming is unsuccessful. Times are approximate and items may be taken out of order at the chair's discretion. The first item on our agenda is the ceremonial proclamation to honor Deputy Chief Brian Holmes. Glad to see everyone here today. Thank you. The Town of Stoughton Proclamation. Be it proclaimed whereas Deputy Chief Brian Holmes began his career with the Stoughton Police Department 27 years ago as a dispatcher. He became a police officer in 1999 with added responsibilities as a crime prevention officer, field training officer, child safety seat technician, CPR one responder instructor, whereas patrol officer Deputy Chief Holmes was a member of the department's community policing unit from 2004 to 2009. In 2003, he coordinated an implementation of an automated external defibrillator at the police department. And whereas for many years he was the instructor for the Municipal Police Training Council. As patrol officer, he was a canine handler from 2011 to 2016. And whereas in 2013, he was promoted to the rank of sergeant. In 2014, Deputy Chief Holmes, along with others, developed the first Narcan program outside of the DPH pilot program. And whereas in 2015, he was recognized for his leadership work ethic and model behavior and was presented with Supervisor of the Year Award. During his career, he was recognized with three life-saving awards, a Community Service Award, 2005, Patrol Officer of the Year, and Supervisor of the Year. And whereas Deputy Chief Holmes has volunteered in countless events, coached the Stoughton Youth Soccer, and spent countless hours as a town meeting representative and a member of the Charter Review Committee. And whereas Deputy Chief Brian Holmes has exemplified honor, integrity, perseverance, hard work, and dedication to the Stoughton Police Department and the community. Now, therefore, we, Deborah C. Roberts, Stephen M. Cavey, Scott D. Carrera, Louis F. Gito, and Joseph M. McChrisky, do hereby urge all citizens to join with us and others townwide to thank Deputy Chief Holmes for decades of outstanding service to this town. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the great seal of the town of Stoughton to be affixed on this 10th day of April, 
2024. Signed, Deborah C. Roberts, Chair. Thank you very much. I just said I'm speechless. Uh, that doesn't happen a lot. Um, 27 years of this town um, of service has been a, a great experience. Um, I've been given the opportunity to serve, and that's what uh, community leadership is about. And you really get intertwined with the community uh, when you do these types of things. Um, that was a long citation, and whoever uh, wrote it with you, Madam Chair, I really appreciate those, those kind words. Uh, so thank you back. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> A few words from Mr. McCriskey at his request. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was here 27 years ago when Brian started, and those are the things that make me feel old. And um, I've been very happy and honored to say that I consider Brian a friend. Uh, at times, he's had some consultation for me that was pretty straightforward, and um, it was that trust that you look for in, in public officials when you're in this job, you know, as a, as a select board member, uh, to be able to have somebody that will give it to you straight. Uh, I would be remiss that uh, I, I wouldn't, if I didn't say how proud I am, and it sounds corny, Brian, to say how proud I am, uh, but to have been a part of watching your career. And um, we had some very challenging times years ago at the Stoughton Police Department. Very, very challenging times. And I watched a guy who, uh, and he's heard me say this before, I watched a police officer who could have very easily just gone along with the flow and got along with everybody and been a part of the group, uh, but had the courage to stand alone. And uh, when things weren't popular to stand alone. And that tells you about a person's character. And uh, I, I just can't put it into words, Brian, really, is when you say, when, when I'm at a loss for words, we really got a problem. But uh, I am so happy for you, uh, as I've said before. It, uh, it's, it's ironic of the town you're going to, because it's like we switched leaders. Uh, so uh, we got one from there, and we're giving one to them. And uh, I know that uh, you're going to do a great job, and I know that you're going to be a godsend to their police officers, if somebody that they can trust, that will have their back, and, and look at yourself as just one of the team. And uh, you've always been that. Uh, and I think that the, uh, the successes that you had at the Stoughton Police Department have been numerous. Uh, the trust that people had and the confidence they had in you as a leader are, are endless as well. And I know that you're going to do the same job in the town of Kingston. And uh, our loss is their gain. Uh, but I know as well uh, what you left behind is people that you know, are ready to, to be in the same position. You know, and uh, so personally, uh, I, I don't know what more I can say, but it's truly from the heart that I'm happy for you. Uh, I've been thrilled to watch your career, we, and uh, we've had some great successes in the police department, you know, as, as a part of you and, and with the chief, that you've really stepped up and made a difference as well. So use that as the, the, the foundation for everything you're going to do there, and uh, you're not moving anytime soon, so I know we'll be running into you again. And, uh, all my congratulations and uh, good luck for the rest of your future. Thank you. Before our legislators speak, I think Mr. Carrara has a few words. Just a little, okay, thanks. 2009, Brian. I heard this squeaky little Bronco too come down the street, swings in the yard. And I want everybody to know that Brian was the first one to thank me for the nine years of service that I put on this board prior. And I never, never forgot that, Brian. That, that meant so much to me when you got out of that vehicle and you said thank you, that I want to say it back to you now. And I'm, I'm kind of sad to see you go, but you got a career that 
that needs to grow even further. And I, and I thank you for the friendship. And I just want to hope you remember that because I'll never forget it. Thank you. And next for, from our legislators, I'll start with Senator Walter Timothy. And then can you uh, announce the next one that's to speak that has a proclamation and then the next person and the next person? Thank you very much. We just. Yes, please. And while you're doing that, I would like to. Oh, you need a microphone? Thank you very much. Galvin, Rep. Phillips, and I are very proud of you and to our board. Thank you for inviting us on. It's a great public service. Chief, I offered this, and you are chief now, we offered this uh, citation to the State Senate this week, and it reads as follows. Commonwealth of Massachusetts State Senate, official citation. Be it known that to all of Massachusetts State Senate, hereby extends its congratulations to Chief Brian Holmes in recognition of your 24 years of dedicated service and distinguished service to the town of Stoughton as a member of the Stoughton Police Department in your new role as a chief in Kingston. Chief. And the select board encapsulated it all earlier. You've done it all, and you've done it well. This citation reads as follows further. Be it further known, the Massachusetts State Senate extends its best wishes for your continued success that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and a copy thereof transmitted by the clerk. It's been signed by our Senate President, Senator Karen E. Spilka, attested to by Michael Hurley, and offered by one very proud State Senator. Chief, congratulations. We're very proud of you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chief, it is a very bittersweet day for the town of Stoughton. Uh, you know, it stinks to be losing you as a deputy, uh, but this is certainly a very well-deserved honor uh, that you are going on to. Um, I think it also speaks volumes about the town of Stoughton's police department uh, and the command staff that they have. Uh, Chief McNamara now has her own coaching tree that uh, that is extending throughout the Commonwealth. Um, you know, and that's that's because uh, you guys do such a great job that other towns, you know, are, are able to see that talent that is grown in Stoughton uh, and want to coach that. So we are, you know, like I said, we are sad to see you go, but uh, we know that you're going to do a great job in Kingston and you're not going to be a stranger. So with that, uh, it's my privilege to add the House citation, um, which reads very, very similarly, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Deputy Chief Brian Holmes in recognition of his 24 years, I apologize, we accidentally docked a dispatch That's service. Good. Yeah. <laughs> of dedicated and distinguished service to the town of Stoughton as a member of the Stoughton Police Department and your new role as chief of the Kingston Police Department. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this 10th day of April 2024 at the State House, Boston, Massachusetts, signed by Speaker of the House Ronald Mariano, State Representative William C. Galvin, and a very proud State Representative Edward R. Phillips. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. <laughs> Absolutely. And don't forget, we want to come up and get a picture with you so we can hand you the proclamation, too. <laughs> she was great. I love it. Great. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't thank the, the chief for giving me the chance uh, to be here number two to work with her. Um, the, the Stoughton Police Department will be in good shape. Um, there is a talented command staff within the building at 26 Rose Street. Um, my successor, or however many there, there may be at any point in time, will be drawn from a talent pool of qualified and competent leadership that exists there now. Uh, when you are in a position of leadership at certain points in time, sometimes you have to have candid conversations about how you can do things better, and we've had those. And there, there have been things that have been said that I very much appreciate, and uh, the chief and I have had some very candid discussions as well. So the town will be in good hands, the police department will be in good hands, uh, and I also want to wish um, the best of luck to Senator Timothy and hopefully his future endeavor in September to be moving on to uh, different series of responsibilities. My best of luck to you, sir, and you have my support. So thank you. Thank you all.
Thank you, video lady. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> now I'm going to turn the microphone off now. Okay. Thank you. Scott, uh, wait a minute. We're going to go in the front and get a picture, if you all don't mind. Stay right there, Brian. And then everyone. Lou, we're going to go in the front end so we can get a picture. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your patience. We will take a five-minute recess to have um, cookies and beverage and then and shake uh, Brian Holmes' hand again, and then we'll reconvene. Thank you very much. Five minutes. I call the select board meeting back to order at 6.29 p.m. The next item on our agenda is reorganization of the board. Mr. Coulter, would you do the honors? Certainly. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, before I begin, I, I just want to congratulate Steve and Scott for their impressive victories last election day. Uh, it's exciting for the prospect of working together with the two of you, so congratulations. Madam Chair, as you know, it's customary for the board to reorganize at its first meeting following election day. And I, uh, while on vacation last week, I rehearsed all week to try and get it right by watching several reorganization films uh, that the board has done. And it seems there have been many different customs and styles used to reorganize. So uh, whereas Attorney Winter is here this evening, and, and through you, I'm glad you approved this, uh, I would like to ask Brian Winter to facilitate the process. Brian is an expert in Robert's Rules. I think it would be much smoother and very well done if Attorney Winter uh, takes the lead on the reorganization. So unless there's so obje no objection, Madam Chair, through you, I'd, I'd ask Brian Winter, I'd yield my time to him. No objections at all. Thank you. Attorney Winter. Thank you, and I'm, I'm happy to assist. Um, I'm going to uh, just explain a few things just by way of opening remarks. Um, and my role here is not to impose, it's to assist, and that's all. And so as uh, Mr. Coulter mentioned you've had sort of a number of variations on the theme. Um, there's no one right way to do this. And in fact, Robert's Rules of Order says there's no particular rule. But there is a very efficient, simple way to do this. And as you well know, this is unlike the way you handle normal board business. The nomination and election process is a, uh, a different creature, and it's a much simpler creature if you let it be. And so my version of, of doing this is going to be uh, the, the most simple form, if you'll bear with me. Uh, and so you really have two things to accomplish, to, to elect a chair and a vice chair. Um, nominations uh, are not made by motion. Uh, no one has to be called upon. Anybody can make a nomination. Once the nominations are set forward, we'll do chair first, we'll do vice chair second. Once the nominations are put forward, they don't need to be seconded. And then we'll vote them in order. And whoever receives the most vote is elected to that office. Then we'll move on to the next office. So I'll, I'll, I'll call for nominations. I'll pause to give everybody a chance to make a nomination. Uh, you can only nominate one person. Uh, people can vote for themselves. You know, the basic simple rules. Um, but unlike the motion practice that you're much more accustomed to, we don't need a second. 
um, and we don't need to go around in any particular order. People don't need to be recognized. Um, and since I'm sort of acting as a de facto moderator here, I'll just sort of ask the question and I'll give everyone a chance to, um, to say what they want to say. And again, we're just going in, in temporal order. So whichever name comes first, that's the name we'll vote first. And that's somewhat arbitrary, but it's just an order of you know, keeping things efficient. Um, so with that in mind, we can proceed with uh, the office of chair. And so I'll start, as I said, with just asking for nominations, and then we'll pause, and we'll hear what the nominations are, and then based on that, um, we'll ask for a vote. So uh, beginning at the top here, are there any nominations for the chair? Yes. I nominate uh, Steve Cavey. Uh, Mr. Cavey has been nominated for the office of chair. I'm going to pause, as I said I would, to see if there are any other nominations. And hearing none, speaking slowly, um, I'll ask if the board is ready to vote on said nomination. Now, since there's only one name put forward, technically um, we wouldn't legally be required to take a vote, but certainly we want to know the will of the board. Um, and so, um, carrying on with your tradition, I'll start with my left this time, and the next time I'll go to my right. So, uh, Mr. Gito, yes. on the nomination of Mr. Cavey as chair. Yes. Mr. McCriskey. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Cavey, do you accept yes. said nomination? Thank you. And Mr. Carr. Yes. Okay. Congratulations, Mr. Cavey, on your election to the chair of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Stoughton. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> uh, moving on to the office of vice chair. Same process, just repeated. Uh, are there any nominations for the office of vice chair of the Board of Selectmen, Select Board? Nominate Scott Carrara. Mr. Carrara has been nominated for vice chair of the Select Board. Do I hear any other nominations? I nominate Deborah Roberts. Deborah Roberts has been nominated. Anyone else? Okay, so like I said, we're just going to go in order. And so whoever receives uh, the most votes, the majority of the board, um, will be nominated to or will be elected to vice chair. Um, if the, either of the um, candidates don't receive a majority, then we're going to do it again. Um, and so going in order, uh, the nominee is Mr. Carrara. And I'll start in on that side this time. Mr. Carrara. Yes. Mr. Cavey. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. McCriskey. Yes. And Mr. Gito. I think I will vote yes. Okay. Well, in that case, that was a unanimous vote. And congratulations, Mr. Carrara, Thank you. Um, on your election to Vice Chair of the Select Board of the Town of Stoughton. Five-minute recess to reorg on the seat. Yes. Uh, we would like to ha take a five-minute recess to reshuffle, reorganize, and we'll be back with the new Chair of the Select Board. Thank you. So, reconvene the uh, meeting of the select board. Uh, I'd like to start just by moving to uh, our next item, number four, which is select board comments. And we'll just go around the horn starting on, the, on my left side. So, Mr. Gito, do you have any comments? Okay. Ms. Roberts? Yes, I do, um, Chairman Cavey. It's been an honor to be chair. And I look forward to working with you and the vice chair and my fellow uh, select board members and all of you in the town as we go forward. I also wanted to say that I had the pleasure, and I'm excited to say that I worked with a number, uh, nine other female municipal leaders, most from the South Shore, most are members of um, select board, and some were chairs of their select board. We developed an organization called Girls Getting It Done. Uh, they're from 
Rockland, Cohasset, Easton, Braintree, Mansfield, Hanson, Randolph, and Hanover. And it was exciting to learn that most towns are experiencing the same things that the town of Stoughton experiences. And what dis made us decide to form and become formalized is because we wanted to brainstorm on how to uh, lower taxes, uh, economic development, and encourage voter participation and engagement. Maybe the town of Stoughton can collaborate, collaborate with these other towns to do a project or something. But it, it was really wonderful uh, working with females and, and sharing all of our experiences and moving their towns forward and moving our town forward. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, Mr. Carrera? I just want to say one thing. Um, thank you to you, you Steve, for the, the race you ran. And I want to thank the residents out there for their trust in me again, and Steve, and uh, just a, you know, heartfelt, warm feeling for everybody in the town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCriskey. I uh, just wanted to bring up one thing that was brought to my attention today, and I couldn't believe that I heard it three times within an hour. Uh, anybody can be scammed. And I know three of our residents who called me tonight, <clears throat> one being a very, very, very prominent member of our community. There are calls going out to people in Stoughton, and they've made it to businesses as well. And uh, asking folks if they want to lower their insur uh, their uh, power bill, and people sat talking on the phone, and then they instruct them to go to CVS and to uh, to do this. You have to pay nine hundred dollars right away, and you have to go to CVS and get three three hundred dollar gift checks, and then call back, and you will be instructed where to send them. You know, and there are people in our community that are just not up on this stuff. They're decent, caring, hardworking people that don't understand. They're not tech savvy. And uh, when they get this BS is what it is, uh, you know, some people fall to it. And uh, I was too late with a very good friend of mine who was scammed by a plumber. We got half of his money back. Uh, but uh, we were able to do other things to cost that company some money. So, but it's just the most despicable thing. I can't believe why people do that. But I guess you know, if people weren't dishonest, oh, what would we do in this world right now, right? Probably a lot of great things. But I just want to make sure our residents know: if you're getting a phone call from anyone that says they're working with National Grid and you can lower your insur your uh, payments but you have to get gift cards, it is a scam. Uh, the police department did respond to one of the people that I know right away in an effort to try to capture these you know, villains, or I got other words that I can't say on this microphone as to what they are. Uh, but again, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware uh, you know, of this. And uh, if you have a, a parent at home and you're watching this, please call them, let them know it's a scam. Don't let them get caught up in it because it's so easy to happen. The second is I just wanted to note, and um, I didn't check in with Father Scott here, who usually handles all of our uh, passings of, of memorable people in, in our community that we know of, is um, Frank Jarden, longtime resident of Northeastern, uh, was a high school teacher here in Stoughton. Um, and uh, he, a very well-known man, passed away uh, at the age of 91. And I just wanted to pass that on without reading anything uh, tremendous. And also ce celebrate the 105th birthday of one Vinci Ramoska of the town of Stoughton, who I believe now is our oldest resident, who lives on her own, in her own house, pays all the taxes we pay, right? And uh, she is out there lighting the town on fire. I mean, if anybody here knows Vincy uh, and Miss Walsh, were you at the birthday party the other day? I had no. a party with the daughter. Okay. So she had a party where she was up actively involved with her party. And if anyone knows Vincy, 
You make sure if she calls and says she has something she wants to bring your attention, you make sure you get it done on the first phone call. You know, she knows she's really, uh, she's such a wonderful person, knows what's going on, she gets around. I hope that I have her energy and her looks, other than being female, that wouldn't look too good, but uh, she doesn't look a day over what anybody would think their parents are. And she's 105, God bless her. I know you're not supposed to say that, what a woman's age is, but when you've lived such a, a distinctive life and you live still like you're a teenager, that's what life is supposed to be. That's what life is supposed to be. So I doubt she's watching the meeting tonight, but um, I'm glad to call her my friend, and I'm glad for her always telling me exactly what she thinks, and uh, I wish her another 105 years. So with that, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McCriskey. So I only have a couple of comments. I'll keep it rel relatively brief. I just want to thank, uh, uh, so was uh, just had an election, uh, and, and I was able to win it. Uh, but I ran along with uh, Scott and also Lauren Morris. Uh, and um, I just uh, I had a really good experience with it. I, I want to thank you know, both candidates, uh, both Mr. Kerr and Ms. Morris, uh, very honorable candidates who uh, you never know how things are going to turn out, or if someone's going to, you know, find, get, get clever or tricky. W what I found was was um, two wonderful people who are very respectful, who understand the process, and did did the best they could to to put their best foot forward. And though uh, in this particular case, uh, Miss Morris uh, did not win a seat, uh, she did extremely well. And for that, you know, I, I just I, I applaud her, and um, and I appreciate the fact that she was willing to step up and take a chance to run, uh, which is uh, the only way the system works is, is if people have the courage to, to run. So for that, I'm grateful. And uh, I am also grateful for the opportunity to continue to work with Mr. Carrere. He's, he's been a, a wealth of knowledge, and, uh, and I'm really looking forward to, to ne our next three years working together. So congratulations. I, 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 uh, I know it's not something you would mention, um, but uh, you didn't just win this election, you blew it out. <laughs> <laughs> you did really, really well. You did a fabu fabulous showing. Uh, and uh, for that, you know, the same thing happened three years ago, so I'm not surprised. Uh, but uh, it's, it's just really impressive to see uh, how well you do in that. And so I, I, congratulations for doing so well in that election. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Chair Roberts. I've, I've served with her for two years as she's been the chair. And uh, she's... Uh, been absolutely fabulous. This has been a wonderful, wonderful two years, uh, a very productive two years, and for that I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, I was fortunate to to work with with uh, you know, the chairs that I worked with uh, from, you know, I guess the first one was uh, Bob O'Regan, then Christine Howe, uh, McCriskey, Mr. McCriskey, uh, and and then Deborah Roberts. And I just have I've had a wonderful uh, experience working with all of them. I'm grateful for their their mentorship, their friendship. And, uh, and their guidance uh, as we got to get to where we are today. Uh, all, all of them have pulled a lot of weight. They've worked very hard to get where they were, and they've done tremendous work. And, and for that, I just want to thank Chair Roberts, for, former Chair Roberts, for the, for the time and effort that she put into, into uh, moving Stoughton forward. It was, it's really commendable. Thank you very much. And the last thing I just want to say is that um, uh, the way I want the next year to run is I'm here for, to serve this board primarily the, uh, and to find ways of prioritizing the things that you, you guys care about, things that you want to accomplish. And I'm going, I would like to ask, as I've had the opportunity to ask this to some people in person, some of you in person, uh, to find a couple of projects, it could be one to three, say, that have a scope of about one year, uh, things you want to accomplish in this one year. And I want to spend the time mapping out how we get from idea to, to having it at a town meeting or have it realized in some fashion. Uh, I'm, I was inspired uh, by the, the uh, get-together we had with, with town employees who said that, that uh, you know, everything's a priority, we can do all these things, we have all these tasks, things that we want to accomplish, let's get our nose to the grindstone and get it done. Uh, I think we can do the same, and I'd like to, to make that, uh, you know, what, what I accomplish in the next years to get your priorities uh, realized. So if there's, you know, scope is one year. We have one year to do it. Uh, figure out the things that you want to accomplish. Uh, let me know what those are, and we'll start getting them 
addressed, we'll, we'll, we'll map out a path uh, to get those completed. So beyond that, I have nothing else. Thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I do have one comment. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Coulter's mid-year review is almost due on the 15th. Yeah. So hopefully we can put that on our calendar and as an agenda item. Absolutely. And we can start that process using the, the template that we developed together. So thank you. <laughs> so it's the mid-year review, right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, next up, town manager's comments. Mr. Coulter, do you have any comments? Mr. Chairman, no new, uh, re to, nothing new to report this week. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Short. How was the weather in Aruba? <laughs> that I cannot report on. <laughs> okay, uh, final item is uh, citizen comments. Ms. Walsh. Uh, Cynthia Walsh, 1096 Park Street. Um, the last month or so, I've been attending the various hearings, preparing for town meeting, and I've been disturbed by some of the behavior that I've seen directed at town employees. In the past, a past board um, approved a code of behavior for the public toward town employees. I'm sure that Ms. Koas... Kowalczykowski Medeiros could find it in the files. Yes, we have. I think that some folks need a refresher course in how to behave properly toward the folks that serve the community. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Cynthia. Uh, our code of conduct is, is on file in the clerk's office, and I'm going to check tomorrow morning as people get sworn in for their new terms. I will make sure that they all receive a copy of that and they understand that. That's uh, very timely. Thank you. Well, the other thing, um, there's a code of conduct at the Council on Aging, and it's literally posted inside the building. And rather than have it on file of the clerk's office, somewhere in the building, maybe in the elevator, maybe one of the windows next to one of the entrances, uh, so that, po that before people even enter the building, they know that this is how we behave toward the pub, to the people that serve us. Um, I know at the Council on Aging, it's actually posted on the ladies' room door. I guess we're a bunch of real rabble rousers. Um, to piggyback on a previous speaker, I've been, um, because of my age, I guess, uh, the recipient of a lot of these scam calls. And I do call the business number at the police station, and I get told there's nothing they can do. Um, I did call the Council on Aging and ask them to put it on their website. I'm getting the granny calls, Grandma tearful calls, I need help, I need bail money. Since I don't have any children, I don't have any grandchildren. I haven't got the electricity one. I got the one about we're going to cancel your car insurance. I don't have a car. Um, there's a problem with your Medicare. I don't receive Medicare. Uh, we've detected um, spam on your computer. I don't have a computer. But People get these calls. The first thing they do is frighten you. Sometimes they even tell you the police are on their way to pick you up. And I said, well, this was years ago. I said, well, it, will it be my brother or my sister? Um, and I know that the food at the station comes from McDonald's, and I'm fine with that. Um, and at that point, the guy ha hung up. But if the scamming is constant, the Council on Aging has tried to make us aware they um, used to have um, quarterly meetings. Someone would come from the DA's office or the post office to tell us the latest scam. Um, perhaps um, someone from the DA's office or the police department could work up a little something and put it on smack so that folks would know this is out there. And I've told everyone I know, if they ask you to go out 
and buy gift cards. It's a scam. We need to keep repeating that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walsh. Uh, final item on our agenda is executive session. I'd like to entertain anybody want to entertain a motion to uh, enter executive session? So, mate. Correct. Okay. So on the motion to enter executive session, Mr. Gino? Yes. Ms. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Carrera? Mr. Cavey, I'm going to vote no because I'm not going to uh, attend the executive session. Thank you. And uh, Mr. McCriskey? Yes. Okay. So the motion passes 4-1. Uh, we are entering executive session. The, Just a minute. The, the items we'll be covering are the approval of executive session minutes. Good. Good. Yep. Uh, so this is the item A is the approval of executive session minutes for the meeting that occurred on March 26, 2024. And item B, executive session uh, is meeting pursuant to open meeting law, chapter 30A, section 21A2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and contract negotiations with non-union personnel, S town clerk. Uh, we will be uh, adjourning from the executive session uh, and not returning to an open session. Uh, so the open session, it will be adjourned now. Thank you. <laughs>